Good morning, friends in St. Augustine. It's a great and beautiful day. God will bless and surprise us today. As one community united in God's love, He is inviting us to set our hearts aflame. Let us make the sign of our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reflection This is a bold and awe-inspiring promise from our Lord. This passage reveals Jesus' desire that we pray with others, uniting our prayers as one and offering it to the Father. Jesus says that when we do this in union with His prayer, our prayer will be answered. The first thing to note is that this passage could easily be misunderstood. For example, is Jesus telling us that if two or more people get together and pray that it rains, then it will happen? Certainly not. The key to understanding this passage is found in the last line. There am I in the midst of them. This means that the goal of gathering together with two or more people in prayer is to unite our unified prayer to the prayer of Jesus. The Father always hears and answers the prayer of the Son. No matter what the Son asks the Father, it is granted. Thus, this passage tells us that the goal of gathering together in prayer with others, that is, with the Church, is to unite ourselves with the one and eternal prayer of God the Son. This is the first and foremost fulfilled within the sacred liturgy. When we come together in the liturgy, our prayer is always heard. Why? Because the liturgy is first an action of God the Son in which He invites us, the Church, to share. And the prayer that is offered is the one and eternal prayer by which God the Son asks the Father to bring salvation to all those who accept the saving action of His sacrifice on the cross. Let us now pray the prayer to Our Lady of Good Counsel. God of heavenly wisdom, you have given us Mary, Mother of Jesus, to be our guide and counselor. Grant that we may always seek her motherly help in this life and so enjoy her blessed presence in the life to come. May the Holy Spirit fill us with reverence for God's creation and compassion for all God's children. May our labors of love on earth enhance the reign of God, and may God's gifts of faith and living hope prepare us for the fullness of the world to come. Amen. Our Mother of Good Counsel, Saint Monica, Saint Augustine, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 